Okay, you guys, let's continue our example of our contingency table, but now let's apply it to conditional probabilities. All right, so quick review. Remember, a conditional probability is saying, like, probability of A given that B has occurred is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. And note that, that the second uh, event is the probability of the event in the denominator. Okay, so we need to real quick uh, establish what is our event A and what is our event B. Okay, so let's say that event A is going to be equal to being happy and event B is going to be if they ate lunch. Alright, so we've got our A and our B established. So let's kind of rewrite this thing just so that we've got the pieces that we want. So we're, what we're really saying is the probability of happy given lunch, and we're saying that's equal to the probability of happy intersect lunch divided by the probability of lunch. Okay, so we really need to figure out, in order to figure out the conditional probability, we need to figure out this intersection and the probability of lunch. Okay, so let's break it down. We have the probability of, we'll say, happy intersect lunch. Okay, coming over here, happy and lunch intersect right here at 60. We have a total of 100 in our sample space. So we can say that this is going to be 60 over 100. Okay, so we've got that. Now we just need to figure out what is the probability of lunch. All right, that one's easy to do too. All we need to do is look at, okay, we've got lunch right here. Come on over. There are a total of 65 people who said that they ate lunch out of the 100 in our sample space. So we've got 65 out of 100. All right, we've got the pieces that, that we need now. So we are going to go, I'll go back to this blue. So we're going to just kind of continue this guy right over here. So this is going to be equal to our intersection, 60 over 100. And we're going to divide this by the probability of our lunch. Okay, so we divide that. 65 divided by 100. So using some of our math skills, we can say that that's equal to 60 over 100 multiplied by 100 divided by 65. I can get that out of the denominator by flipping it over. Those 100s drop out because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. And so I've got 65, oopsies, not 65. This is going to be 60 out of 65. So given that somebody has eaten lunch, the probability that they are happy is 60 out of 65. All right, so that's one way to look at it. There's another way that since we put it in a contingency table, that's a really handy way of, of thinking about this. So if we say that, remember, this is the, what's the probability of A has happened given that we know that B has occurred. Okay, so we can basically kind of subset our data. So what we can do is we can say, okay, let's ignore the no lunch because I know in fact that our people ate lunch, given that they ate lunch. So I know that they ate lunch. So now what's the probability that somebody is happy? And now I can say, okay, there are 60 out of the 65 of the people who ate lunch, which gets us right back down here. So using our contingency tables, we can see these kind of these probabilities. Okay, so we did that with this with happy and lunch. Well, what if we did instead of happy and lunch, if we did something like happy given sad? Now you might say it's like, well, that's kind of obvious, but let's let's walk our way through it and we'll see. Uh, what our answer is. So let's go ahead, let's put in a new event. We'll say event 
C is equal to sad. And here what I want to do is I want to say that we've got now, so what is the probability of being happy given that I know somebody is sad? You're like, huh, well, uh, intuitively it makes sense that this should, should be zero, uh, but let's go through and, and see how this goes down. So remember, we need to figure out now the probability of happy intersect sad and divide by the probability of being sad. Okay, so what we really need to do is we need to now take a look at our contingency table and see where does happy and sad intersect each other. And if you notice, these are all the happies. And if we circle the sads, we notice that there's no intersection between the two. That's because in a contingency table, columns are mutually exclusive from one another, and rows are mutually exclusive from one another. So in that case, we've got that 0 out of 100 are both happy and sad. That makes sense. You can only respond you're either happy or sad in this scenario. And we divide by the probability of being sad, which was 20 out of 100. And if we go ahead and do all of this, we can now say that it is 0 out of 20, which gives us 0. So just remember, if you take the conditional probability of mutually exclusive events, the probability is 0. And we could also do this kind of our shortcut way. Given that somebody is sad, okay, sad, what's the probability that they're happy? Well, there, there's no options here that are actually happy, so it drops out to being 0. So anyhow, that is how we can use our contingency table to figure out conditional probabilities.